Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today I'm standing in front of Dorothy Vallon's apartment building from the film Blue Velvet. Welcome to Horrors Hall Grounds. start our adventure at Jeffrey Beaumont's house. Yes, that's the same house you saw the fire truck pass in the beginning. I don't know how many people put that together. Anyway, I went up to the house, knocked on the door, see if anybody was home. Nobody was there, so I took it upon myself to just kind of cruise around the property. You know, there was no fences, there was no no trespassing signs. I was trying to be respectful, you know. So, uh, let's take a look at the backyard. This is where Jeffrey's father had the heart attack. Just up here. I didn't get as good a footage as I would have liked because eh, I kind of wanted to be in and out of here, you know? But right about here is where it happened. Here's some behind the scenes photos of the crew working in this area. You can see that staircase over there. And right there is where it went down. I just kind of walked around and looked, checked everything out. They had put up something to block off this area over here, so clearly they didn't use this area back here, but uh, I filmed it just in case. And heading back. It's pretty much looks the same. I mean, they've obviously added this big flower pot thing here. But uh, for the most part, still looks the same. I love that dog. Now we're going to head back out to the street to where Sandy's boyfriend followed them home from the party and confronts them in front of Jeffrey's house. This is also the spot where Dorothy Valens shows up nude, coming out from behind those bushes. See that light pole there with the address on it, 109? Still there today. Pretty amazing. The Beaumonts. The one location I was unable to find is the field where Jeffrey finds the ear. I do know it's currently a football field somewhere, I just don't know where. If you happen to know where it is, please drop me a line, I'd love to find out. So now I'm standing across the street from Screen Gem Studios. This was also known as DEG Studios. Dino De Laurentiis owned this back in the day. So many incredible movies have been shot here. Can't get in there, I mean there's really nothing to see. It's a big empty warehouse or it's full with a new set from a new production. This was also used for the interiors of the film Blue Velvet. Uh, Ben's place was here, the Slow Club, that was all shot here. Pretty amazing. There's a lot of great pictures of David Lynch hanging out outside of these studios. Actually right over there, to be exact, over by number one and two, he was over there. And uh, I'll add some of those in there so you can see. But many great things are shot here. This includes the interior hallways and apartment of Dorothy Valens, as you can see here, and some behind-the-scenes photos of the construction of her apartment. Hey, 
And now we are at Sandy's house from Blue Velvet. This is surprisingly close to the location they used for the exterior of the Slow Club. You could almost walk there, they're so close. You don't really get that reference in the film that they're near one another, but they just happen to be pretty darn close to each other. As you can see, the house itself really hasn't changed a whole lot. Doors a little different, but for the most part, house looks pretty much the same. Now standing in front of Beaumont's hardware store in Blue Velvet. Check it out. Looks like it's some sort of pool hall now. Says it's open. There's a lighted sign that says it's open. There's even a little window sign that says it's open. But it's clearly locked. But the lights are on like it's open. And you can see in there. This is where they shot the interiors of the hardware store as well. Last time I was here, it was vacant. It was empty. But it's good to see that they made use of it and turned it into, it's, it's like a pool hall slash convenience store. It's interesting. I have no idea what it's called because there's no sign unless Front Street market and produce I guess that is that is or is that the thing next door no I guess this is it I don't even see any produce I see what looks like a melon oh wait there is a melon in there there's some produce right there I wouldn't say enough to you know garner that sign but there's produce in there I'm gonna give them that I'm gonna give them the fact that there is produce in there and they apparently have Powerade. And they have what looks like a bar? I, I, this is a really bizarre location. Really bizarre location. Very strange. I'm actually really disappointed this place isn't open. I'd love to just kind of look around in there because that place looks bizarre. And the mural that was here, now gone. But Beaumont's baby, living the dream. We're now at Central High School, which is actually New Hanover High School. The school's been used in other films as well, including another episode I have coming up soon. Stay tuned. Anyhow, right here is where Jeffrey Beaumont pulls up in the convertible. He pulls over, has a chat with the girls, and then she jumps in and they head down the street. So you can see it pretty much looks the same. Has it changed a lot, just a little more growth from the trees. Now down the street here, there's a little walkway bridge. Kind of hard to see now because of all the trees, but I got a shot of it here. At the same time, trying to not get hit because it's actually a very busy street. You get a shot of it there. Later in the film, he comes back by to pick up Sandy. She's waiting out in front of this building here. He pulls up again in pretty much the exact same spot as he did before, and then she panics as she sees her boyfriend across the street at the tennis courts doing jumping jacks with the football team. Now that fence in the middle of the road there wasn't there before. That's been added. Jeffrey here pretty much blows Sandy's cover by looking over directly at him and totally bumming the dude out. Poor Mike. So now I'm in front of Arlene's Diner, which today is called Savories. Unfortunately, it's not open, or I would have partook in some of their tasty cuisine. Right inside there is where they had their various meetings about the mischief they get in involving Dorothy. Now I was able to get some shots through the window to see where they were sitting. This is the view they would have had from that window right there. Now see this truck here that says Lumberton on it? David Lynch hand cut those letters himself. 
right here where this table is, is where they would have been sitting. Now there's another shot when they come back later to the diner and they're sitting in a corner. I believe this is this back corner here. As you can see a window over her shoulder. Based on the layout, it had to have been that corner. Now in front of Winnie's Tavern, which was the slow club in the film, there was an extension put on the end of this building to make it look much longer and bigger than it is. I spoke to the owner who said they did film at this location. She wasn't 100% sure about the interiors, but if you look here, it is a very small bar. So it's been remodeled and everything, but looking around, I think maybe the shots of Laura Dern and Kyle McLaughlin sitting there watching the show might have been shot at this bar. But what they're supposed to be watching on stage, that definitely was a set shot at the studios. But I think this is the interior of that bar before it was remodeled. Here's a really cool behind the scenes shot. Look at the texture of the wall. Exactly the same as it is today. So they pull up here and park right along here with the church as the backdrop. And then Laura Dern proceeds to tell Kyle McLaughlin her wacky dream. This is where the car pulls up. See that gray building, tannish gray building? That's new construction. This is when the actual building construction begins. And right here, this Barbary Coast, that's the entrance to Ben's place. This is Ben's place right here. As you can see, it's just a regular bar. Once they walk to this door, it cuts to a set. Earlier in the film, they actually drive right by the same bar, right there, Barbary Coast. Then they head down the street to this location, which is actually Port City, Java. And now we head to Lumberton Police Department. This used to be 115 Red Cross Street, this is where the Lumberton Police Department was. This area has totally been redeveloped. Looks nothing like it used to. But that building used to stand right here. Unfortunately, it is gone today. We now head over to the party house. Looks very different in the daytime. See those stairs out front? Look at that. Pretty cool. They were just chilling right there in between takes. It's just a random house in a random neighborhood, but it's pretty cool. And that's about all I got to say about that one. Today, I staked out Frank's place with a camera. And here we are, Frank Booth's building. This is pretty damn cool. Sun is in a bad spot. Once it gets behind this building, it should be fine. As you can see, this parking lot's been developed and that building that was here is gone. But right about here is where that gas pump would have been. But as you can see, the building itself pretty much looks the same as it did in the film. So right around this corner here, Frank and the Yellow Man. The Yellow Man. Go walking around and head to the side door there's actually a deleted scene where you see them go in through this door and a shot of them coming up the stairway, but that wasn't in the final cut of the film.
One thing about editing, when you get into it, you start to realize things, like which window this was. I figured it out. The three windows that you see, there's two of them, are the windows to the right of this little arch here. That blue one, then a red one, then a blue one. You can match up the bricks. If you look at this closely, you freeze frame it, you can figure out those three windows right there are the three windows. Now see all that dust on the ground? Look, it's still there. That same colored white dirt or whatever the hell it is, it's still there. I have to admit, this is pretty damn cool. Frank Booth, the yellow man. The yellow man. All of them, right here. It's where the big shootout took place at the end of the film. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff, if you ask me. Even though nobody's really asking. I'm still volunteering the information. And here we are, Dorothy Vallon's apartment building. How amazing is this? Directly across the street from the apartment building is this church. Now see that white car parked there? That's right where they are parked by that staircase. You can see the stairs next to it. Unfortunately, it's the best shot I got of that. Anyhow, he then crosses the street from the church and walks over to the entrance of the apartment building. So something interesting happened to me when I was at this location. See the guy in the red shirt up there on the top? Yeah, that guy. He dropped something literally 10 feet in front of me when I was underneath the building filming. I got this all on film, and who knows, a couple seconds sooner, and I kind of got whacked on the noggin, and I may not be talking to you guys right now, who knows? I may be being a bit dramatic, but it definitely would have hurt, there's no doubt about that. But anyway, I go across the street here, and I'm going to let the original audio pick up here in a second, so you can hear this. You'll start hearing a clanging sound, like a tang, 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 because it was hitting things as it was falling. Check it out. Whoa! Literally, a, that just fell from up there. We're okay down here! I'll put it in the doorway for you. Yeah. This, I could have been killed filming Horrors Hall Grounds. I could have been killed. Ah. I just fell from the top. <laughs> he was up there working. Missed me by about 10 feet. You don't get to see this so well in the film, but apparently David Lynch lived in the apartment just below Dorothy Valens in 610. Now honestly, the door being open caught me by surprise, so I just walked in there and started filming quickly, afraid that I was going to get kicked out at any moment. I was looking for Valens on those mailboxes, but uh, no such luck. So I just kind of filmed a little bit, turned around, and got the hell out of there. take a look at the fire escape that uh, Jeffrey went up and was chased by the man in black aka Frank around this corner in this area here From here, 
and then up the fire escape. Woo! Crazy. I had a blast visiting the locations from Blue Velvet. I know some people might say, Horror's Hollowed Grounds? Is Blue Velvet a horror film? Well, I feel it definitely falls in that category. It definitely has horror elements. And doing my research, I actually found an interview with Dennis Hopper where he said that he felt that it was a horror movie. So, you know, can't argue with Hopper. He was the man. Ha <laughs> ha!